All right, today I'm gonna to be unboxing the iPad mini seven. Yes, I got the iPad mini seven right after I released a video saying why I'm not getting the iPad mini seven. And I'll explain that while I'm unboxing it. So the box is almost identical to the iPad mini six. If you had that at all, very typical Apple box. They have the same wallpaper they had on the previous iPad mini. It says iPad mini on the side back has the pull tabs now instead of the plastic. So I think that means all of Apple's products now have the pull tabs instead of the plastic wrap. So I think they finally come full circle with that. And I don't mind the pull tabs, but you know, plastic has something satisfying about it too, but eh, that's all right. This is the 128 gigabyte version of the iPad mini A17 Pro as Apple refers to it. Here is that little device now. These are still so fun to hold in your hand. Anyway, we'll get to that more in a second. In the box, you get your paperwork, your quick start guide, and just words and stuff. And you get a braided USB-C to C cable and Apple's 20 watt power adapter. And it's kind of nice that you still get the adapter in the box with the iPads. I mean, Apple charges what, like 20, 30 bucks for theirs now. So that's an additional value, I guess, when you get this still. All right, time to see if this iPad mini is actually good enough for what I need it to do. Brand new iPad mini here. Very reflective. Say hello to the iPhone that's recording this. So yeah, I mean, pretty typical iPad screen here. Definitely not the nano texture that I've kind of gotten used to. It's still pretty stinking reflective of all these lights around me. But let's power this little mini on and I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I decided to get this. So I saw some initial reviews and one in particular really caught my attention and they showed that the iPad mini 7 or A17 Pro, however you want to label it, can now support Final Cut Pro for iPad and that was a big deal to me. I did not think Apple was going to do that because they have locked it to the M series chip iPads and I found it unlikely that they were going to change that standard but I guess they did. So now my iPad mini can actually do my live multicam setup if I prefer. And that's a really good option because sometimes I like to show my 11 inch iPad Pro in a video. I no longer have the 13 inch iPad Pro. So it did actually now fit a void that I had in my setup. And that's what first made me start thinking, maybe I was wrong about this device. I am going to update this now. And then another big one is I didn't catch that the USB-C speed actually is doubled than what it was with the six. So it's now 10 gigabit per second, which is exactly what these iPhones are that I have recording. That's amazing because double the transfer speed is very helpful in the kind of workflows that I do right now. And it makes this actually possible to be used as one of my cameras in my live multicam as well, because the camera on here is decent and it's better than the iPhone XR I would occasionally bring in to be my backup camera. So this could actually do that. And I could even potentially start looking into recording in ProRes or even ProRes log with external SSDs. And this USB-C port would totally be fast enough to support that. So there's a lot of benefits that I'm starting to see with this new version. And for me, it's great that it supports the Apple Pencil Pro because I no longer have my second gen pencil. I have one Apple Pencil Pro and that's plenty to go between the two of them. I don't think I need a dedicated Apple Pencil per iPad that I have. It's pretty easy to repair them. So that's how I'm gonna use it going forward. And Apple Intelligence was not really impressing me in the first beta and the RC build that I got. And by the time you're watching this, the final version might even be out already or just about. 18.1 had some cool stuff, but it was not that impressive. However, I just got beta one of 18.2. And wow, are these features way more impressive. 
I have it on my 16 Pro Max. And visual intelligence is only on the 16 series, but all the other features that I got in the new version are across the lineup and they are good. The new mail app is awesome. The ChatGPT integration are super cool. And they have the image generation stuff now too, which I have not been able to access yet, but hopefully I will soon. And I wanna get that beta on this iPad mini and kind of turn this iPad into my beta testing device for iPad OS and my backup live multicam device and my backup camera. So now with all of that being said, this was like one of the cheapest ways to do all of that because it's the cheapest iPad that I know on Apple's current lineup that supports Final Cut Pro for iPad. Obviously, unless you go use, which is totally an option as well, but as far as a brand new iPad, this is the cheapest one. And it's the only one that's really small enough to work on some of my camera mounts and fit in the system as well. So it can be that backup camera. And I've been loving having really quick and easy access to ChatGPT in the Notes app and everything like that. And I think I'm gonna really enjoy that with this iPad mini as well. So I was one over in the span of a few days and I realized I could trade in my iPhone XR for like $90 or almost $100 off this iPad mini. So for $400 solving all these little problems, now the iPad mini 7 seemed like a way better option. I still don't really know if I'm gonna use this as my tiny little portable notebook. That's what I liked about it before, but I still think my Super Note tablet is gonna be that for me. But I'm gonna do a direct comparison between the iPad mini 7 and the Super Note A6X2 Nomad. So if you're curious about what little tablet for digital note taking you should choose, be subscribed for that future comparison. Although here's a little tease of what that comparison could be. And it looks like the side bezels aren't too much different here, but they definitely have thicker top and bottom bezels. E-ink screens tend to have at least one pretty chunky bezel, usually two. So that's to be expected, but yes, very close in screen size, but the iPad mini is a bigger screen, but obviously the technologies are just very different. And I'm very excited to do a deeper comparison between these two. All right, we're gonna speed through the setup process here. Really quick, I just wanna mention that I wish this had Face ID because Touch ID is not my favorite, but otherwise the setup went pretty smoothly. I am not going to transfer anything. I also know that Touch ID doesn't even work as well for some people's hands, particularly my mom. For some reason, Touch ID never worked with her fingers. They would just scan in, work a little bit, and then it just stopped working. It's like her fingerprint was constantly changing or whatever. So I know it's not a very large majority of people, but it does affect some people. So I think Face ID is just easier. And I don't really know of anyone who Face ID does not work for. But if that's you, let me know in the comments below because as far as I know, that doesn't really exist. All right, I'm gonna sign into my Apple ID quick. All right, I am being all signed in. So I hope that makes sense as to why I changed my mind on needing an iPad mini in my setup. I really don't mean to go back on my word by any means. I wasn't making the previous video for clickbait or just for the views because honestly, it didn't even do that well anyway. So. Uh, I was just genuinely thinking I was not gonna be getting the new iPad mini and I ended up changing my mind. And unfortunately I had that video created basically right at the launch day of the iPad mini. So I didn't get it out there until this week. And then it looks like I changed my mind right away and I did not. Alrighty, welcome to iPad. Let's get started. Yeah, all right iPad mini again, here we go. So my first impressions are, I like it. I've always liked the design of the iPad mini. This is the blue color and you can't see it very well on camera. Hopefully one of these lights will catch it right where you can kind of see the blue tone. It's a very blue gray. So it's definitely not a blue blue, but yeah, it's got the hint of blue. It also says iPad mini at the bottom now, which the previous versions only said iPad. So that's cool. I mean, doesn't really change a lot, but it's there. 
I've heard people test the speakers already. The speakers are identical to the previous version. The screen is identical to the previous version. Besides, they improved the jelly scroll effect. It is not gone though. They just tweaked it where it's less noticeable. I never noticed it to begin with, so I'm not even gonna try to talk about the jelly scrolling too much more than this. If that bothers you, I'm sorry, but I can't see it. It doesn't bother me. And if you're unsure about that, I would say stop listening to anyone who's telling you that's a reason to not get this device. It's a non-issue as far as anything I've ever seen and anyone I've ever handed this device to. You have to really try to look for it to make it a problem. It's not a problem. There's like about 2% of people out there that it bothers so much that they have to return the iPad mini. And I just don't think that's going to be you, especially if you're not looking for it. And if you're like, what in the world is the jelly scrolling effect? Well, that's just the phenomenon when an LCD display, if you move it up and down kind of quick, one side of the screen seems to refresh faster than the rest. And almost like it's trying to catch up to it and creates this wobbly jelly like effect on the display. Again, I never really could notice it. So it's a non-issue for me, but it's something that happens on many LCD displays, not just iPad minis. It was something that people noticed a lot with the previous generation. I never did. And this one's even better at it. So you're probably not going to notice it. I always forget how small they make the widgets on the iPad mini display. I still feel like there's so much buffer on the edges. Why not let the apps and the widgets go all the way to the edges? I, I don't get it. I think it's because the iPad mini has one of the longest aspect ratios. So they just don't know how to deal with that very well. It just seems like a flaw that's been here way too long. Let's get some proper iPad OS support for the iPad mini, <laughs> come on. It's a little silly and a little ridiculous, to be honest. All right, I'm gonna begin the update to the iPad OS 18.2 beta, as this will be my beta device. So first impressions are good. I mean, I don't think the display feels super sluggish for being 60 Hertz. And since almost all my stuff is 120, I'm surprised I didn't really notice it that much. It hasn't been bad feeling. It's definitely still snappier than my iPhone XR every time I use that thing as a backup camera. So again, for replacing that and having even more functionality that it can do for me in my setup, this became worth it. And I really hope I see that value as I continue using it. And I'm excited to integrate this into my workflow and I'm excited to try these brand new AI features on the iPad mini especially all that ChatGPT integration in Apple Notes. And hopefully my iPad mini will gain access to image creation tools sooner than my iPhone 16 Pro Max because I've been on the waiting list for over 24 hours now and I want I want to make those gen mojis, all right? I'm I'm going to make good gen mojis. I'm going to try. I don't know. I, I don't know how useful those will be, but I do want to try them. So it's a little frustrating that I haven't been able to yet, but hopefully this will get on it soon and my phone will get on there soon as well. And that's gonna be my goal, is to have one iPhone, one iPad on the betas pretty much at all times. And that way I can make videos on stuff to come. And I can also reference what's on the publicly available versions with my 15 Pro Max and my M4 11 inch iPad Pro. So that way those ones will always be stable, functional, working, especially my 11 inch iPad, because that is my computer right now. This is everything I do is on there. I need this one to be functional and not glitchy. And that's why it'll stay on a stable build of iPad OS. And this will be my risk taker, the one that's on the latest cutting edge, but has the most glitches. So yeah, I think that's gonna be a good system. Obviously there's a few things I won't be able to show on iPad mini that I could on an 11 inch M4 iPad Pro, like external monitor support and stage manager. I think those are like the only things now that are on my M4 iPad Pro software wise that's not on the iPad mini. But if I find anything else, I'll definitely let you guys know that as well. First impressions are good. I like it. I think it's gonna work for what I'm using it for. It's a good iPad and plenty more content to come on this. I want to show, like I said, that comparison between this and my SuperNote tablet a comparison with this and the M4, and a follow-up video to show how I can use the iPad mini in my recording studio setup and if it's been practical or not. Anyway, guys, 
Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for taking the time to see me unbox this and give my first impressions of the iPad mini. Hopefully you're not too mad at me for changing my perspective on it in this short amount of time. I think I made the case for why I ended up getting this pretty good. So if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. And of course, share this video and subscribe to the channel. So much more iPad and tablet content coming to this channel. So please be subscribed for all your tablet inquiries and iPad needs. And if you have any suggestions on videos you'd like to see from this channel, be commenting those below in any video. I'll be scanning all the comments all the time for video suggestions. So I always take those to heart. I can't always get them out right away, but I do consider them. I try my best to make videos you guys want to see. If you're curious about this new setup at all, it's all gonna be linked in the description down below. Some of these videos coming out right now have a little bit of tweaking to do. We had some problems recording the Nano Leaf behind us and some flickering in a couple videos that we tried to fix. So you'll see some come out soon that might have some color balance or flickering issues. We tried to mitigate them in editing as much as possible, but just be warned of that, be a little forgiving on these first few videos in this new setup, and then we're gonna get a rhythm going and be totally fine. And as always guys, have a great rest of your day.